Hey, hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to episode five. I think it's episode five of the Full Stack My Journal series. I uh, hope you've been enjoying the last couple of lessons. In today's video, I wanted to talk about something a little bit new called Actions 2. And it turns out the way that we're writing our function endpoints right here for the REST API is not exactly the recommended way of doing things. So let me go over here and take you to the Chrome browser. Uh, if you look at the documentation available for the sales MVC website here, you can see that uh, we are down here, documentation, concepts, actions, and controllers. Here is a brief overview as exactly what actions are. You know, the stuff that we've been writing out all along here. And further down below, you know, make sure to read what's above there. Uh, it tells you what does an action file actually look like. Well, action files can use one of two formats, actions two, which is the recommended, or the classic version of routes, which is what we have over here. So this is the classic version. And so you probably don't know what actions two looks like. And the format is right over here. It looks a little bit scary. I know when I first saw it, I thought that uh, it was a little bit too much to take in at the first glance but this is pretty easy to read once you get used to it and we have a name for the actual function a uh, quick description as to what the function does we have some inputs for this actual route function so for example maybe a title a user id and so on and so forth we have something called an exit and then all the way down below we have the actual function that you know is responsible for either creating a user or creating a post like what we are doing over here so that is a brief description as to what actions is uh, make sure to at least read it over once uh, you don't have to exactly understand what's going on because i will now go over a brief example as to how to create an actions to route and also why exactly we want to use it so how do i want to illustrate today's example is to go into postman right here and remember, uh, whenever we need to create a post, we have to send uh, two properties into this actual post request, right? We need to send the actual title and then something called a post body. So let's go over here and let's say post body like this and let's say body of post. And now we can send this and this will create our actual post object in the database. Uh, it's showing this HTML because we are doing it a redirect, but that's not really important. And the reason why we want to use actions too is because let's say we are trying to create a post, right? And let's say we don't actually pass in the title and post body. Well, it gives us this strange error message right here. And this is kind of not all that user friendly. So let me show you a better approach of actually fixing this create route for our post controller. So we are creating our post. We're trying to get the body and title. And if it doesn't work out, we throw this server error, something like that. That's the current logic. So instead of using this uh, classic or route syntax for create, what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment all that out and I'm going to kill my server down here. So it's all killed. And what I'll do is I'm going to create a, an action using sales generate an action. And for this action, I'm going to put it inside of the post and let's say create like so. So post and create. Uh, there's some warnings and some reminders up here that will tell you to actually create your route and also restart your server. But we'll take care of that a little bit later. And after you create that action, what you'll see is for the controller, you have controller, then you have post, and then now you have this create action created inside of this little file here. And whenever this little template is created, it'll give it a friendly name, a description, and some empty inputs and empty exits like so. Uh, all I want to do for now is to make sure that I can actually hit this route. So I am going to restart my server with node mod. And let's go back to the routes right here, so routes.js. And for the actual creation of a post, uh, we're using postcontroller.create. I don't exactly want to use this anymore, so I'll change this to post and slash create to point to this file right here. So post and create like so. Uh, you can hit save now. And what you'll do is if you send this request to this route now, you can see a different message. So hopefully send and we'll get an okay instead. Okay, so why are we getting the okay message is because uh, we're not really doing anything with this particular endpoint right now. It's just saying return down below. And let's say I want to change this by saying console.log and we are now inside of 
Uh, let's see, post slash create action like that. So hit the save, restart, uh, hit this one more time. You will see we are now inside a post create action, which means that we're ex uh, executing this code on line 21. Okay, so this is your actual action to template format function. And the nice thing about this is for the actual post, right? We have this post object right here that requires a title and the body. And so let me go back to the create. Uh, for the inputs right here, we can actually declare something called the title. And we can use a couple of different properties for the title, such as the type, and make sure to use it as a string, and also required to be true like so. Uh, you can also use a description if you really wanted to do so. So maybe this is the uh, title of your, so of post object like that, hit a comma. And now I'm gonna save and look what the difference is when I try to send my uh, post route endpoint without the title. So hit the send. You'll see that the error message that comes back is a lot more user friendly. It has an array of problems. The title is required, but it was not defined. And it tells you what you can potentially do to fix this actual error. And something else that you'll uh, want to do is for the inputs, you can also say the uh, post body, and let's just do that. And let's say type is also a string and also required is true like that. Okay, so now instead of just having the title right here, I'm going to send and you'll see uh, post body is also required, but it was not defined. So this is a lot better than it was before. You can actually parse this using a JSON decoder if you wanted to do that. Uh, let's see if I pass in the actual title right here. This guy is going to go away, but this uh, little post body error will still remain. So click that. And now it says that post body is required. We can hit this. And then now we can say send like so. And everything looks okay. But uh, the last final thing that we have to do is this guy isn't really creating our post object like we would expect, right? So what we want to do is we want to go back and execute this post creation code with a title and post body like that. Uh, I'm going to use the await syntax and this guy is already an async function. So here we go. We are going to say await and post.create with the title and the title is going to come from the inputs right here. So the way you write this code is to use inputs.title and that should be okay. I think I need to wrap all this in a dictionary object like so. Uh, the last thing you also want to do is to make sure you say body and this is going to come from inputs.postbody like that. Okay, so let me try to minimize this to get some more space for the recording. And what I'll do is I'll hit save. And what we will get is I'm going to hit this right here. So hit the send right here. Everything looks okay. This should have created our post using these two values of dinner and body of post. Uh, last thing I want to do is to maybe hit the actual uh, post endpoint with the get request of post with s to the send. And you'll see that at the very end here, we have created that post object all the way down below. So dinner and body of post. If you go back to our browser uh, UI, you can refresh this and you'll have that post uh, down below. I think I created one previously, so that's kind of why it's there. And so that looks pretty good. Let's kind of go back to the post endpoint in Postman. And uh, now you kind of understand how exactly we create a post using an actions to template instead of the classic format that we were using in the previous episodes. Okay, so now that you have a brief understanding of what actions to format looks like, I also want to quickly talk about this exits parameter right over here and tell you what it can allow us to do inside of this function below. And the way I'm going to actually illustrate this is to create a delete route using actions too. And so what do I mean? Well, inside of post controller, we have this delete route right here. I don't exactly want to use this anymore. So let me comment that out and hit the save. And what I can do is I'm going to kill off my server and say sales generates. And let's say the action of post and delete like so. This is going to actually create a delete file right here. So it looks good. Let me restart my server with node mod. Everything looks like it's running on 1337 right now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and declare uh, for the actual endpoint of delete, I need the actual ID. So let's say ID is right here. Let's say type is going to be either a number or a string. I think a string will work for us right now. 
and required is going to be true as well. Okay, so here is the actual ID of the post I want to delete. Uh, let me hit the save right here and try to send a delete request using this postman. So use the get and let's change this to delete right here. Uh, let me hit the send right now and you'll see that the actual uh, delete request is not found. So what exactly is going on here? Well, let me go ahead and change this to use the actual ID of one and hit send like so. And that's not found as well. Okay, so that is looking pretty good. I'm going to go back to my routes file, which is right here. And what I want to do is for the delete right here, I want to modify this to say post and delete to again and point to this file right here. So post and delete lives right here. And so what I'll do is I'm going to hit send or maybe I'll hit save first. Everything looks good. One, three, three, seven, hit the send like that. And now you'll see that we are uh, going to hit the problem of ID is required, but it was not defined. Okay, so what is going on here is for the delete route, I'm using the slug of post ID. So this is very important. Uh, let me copy post ID right here and go back to the delete route. Uh, instead of using just ID, I'm going to uh, use post ID instead and hit the save. And so this problem right here should go away uh, because we're going to capture the slug inside of the inputs right here. So let me prove that to you. Hit the send right here and uh, everything is going to be just fine. So let me just use a console log and uh, let's see, we are in delete post action, hit the save. I just want to make sure that we're executing that by hitting a send and we are in delete post action. That does pretty much nothing at this point. Okay, so now that we have this actual post ID declared as an endpoint or input rather, we can delete that and make sure that when we hit delete, we actually get a not found and maybe I'll say ABC and let's say that. So that looks fine as well. Okay, so that is pretty good. And let's go ahead and try to delete this post right here with the ID of 19. Let's go over here, 19, hit send. And we are in delete post action, which is right over here. Okay, so something that you can do with this exit guy is you can actually say this. You can say uh, invalid and just give it a brief message like this. I think you can say description and say this was an invalid. Uh, post to delete, you know, whatever you want to say if you run into the invalid case. And something that you can do inside of this function now is you can throw this particular exit value of invalid. So I'm just going to do that with the string like that. And let me just say send like so. And you'll see that we are going to run into an internal server error because we are now throwing this exit. Uh, we're not printing out this message, so this guy isn't all that helpful. Uh, something that you probably want to do is let's say we are trying to delete the ID of something that doesn't exist, right? So we have the ID of 17, 18, 19. Let's try to delete the value of 20 like that. Hit the send and we're still throwing this error. So let's cancel out of this guy by a comment. I'll hit the send right now. So I know for a fact that the ID of 20 doesn't exist. So, you know, console log trying to delete a post with ID and just say uh, inputs dot post ID. Hit the save one more time. Make sure to add that as a string and hit the send. So you'll see that we are trying to delete the post with ID of 20 and let's actually perform the delete here. So the perform, the delete will actually be performed with await and we'll say post delete like that or I think it's destroy rather and the criteria for the destroy is the ID of inputs dot post ID. Okay, so whenever you actually perform a delete, you can fetch the record that is actually deleted by appending dot fetch with it and just say a uh, record like that. And why don't I close out of that to make sure you can see what's going on here. Uh, you can actually check this record right here. So if it's not a record that you can delete, then this object right here is going to be nil. And that means we're going to execute line 32. And so whenever this happens, you can say a throw and you can say throw with the actual object of invalid and give it a message right here. So uh, record does not exist like that. And so I'm gonna save and I'm going to execute this one more time. Instead of seeing okay, you'll see an error message or you should hopefully see an error message. So what exactly is going on here? Well, I'm going to say console.log. I wanna see what this actual record is. And then so let me save and try to hit this one more time. And you'll see that we have an empty array object. 
So that's not good. Uh, what you can do is you can actually check if this record right here, uh, you can say if dot length is equal to zero, that means we actually didn't delete anything. So I'll just run this again and I'm going to hit the send right now. And you'll see that record does not exist because uh, the actual record array count is actually zero. So that's pretty much how that works. Uh, if you want to throw a different error message, you can make this a little bit more helpful by wrapping this inside of a uh, dictionary like this. So error and do that. And I'll run this again. You'll see that if I try to delete one more time, you can actually parse this inside of your iOS app or your HTML app a lot easier if it's in JSON format like so. Okay, so that's pretty good. And let's try to delete the post that has the ID, of, let's say 19 right now to make sure that everything is okay. And so what I will do is I'm going to delete it and this record, I'm going to return it like that and hit the save right now. I'm going to hit the send right here and it says that record does not exist. So let me try to see what exactly is going on here. And let's see, we are trying to delete this with the ID of 18 maybe. So let's modify that and hit the send. And you can see that uh, we actually deleted the post object. And because we are returning the deleted record coming back from line 30, we are actually sending back an array of deleted records just like so. This way, if you're using an iOS app, you can kind of confirm what has been deleted or what hasn't been deleted by using this return value right here. So using this exits, you can actually uh, type in more than just invalid. You can say bad request or, you know, maybe a record does not exist. Uh, you can modify this to be whatever you want. Just make sure that when you're throwing the actual exit error, uh, you are throwing the correct one. Uh, you see invalid here and invalid here. That's kind of why everything is responding the way it is. Alrighty, everybody, that is going to wrap it up for today's video on how to write out actions to endpoints inside of sales in BC. Now, in the very next lesson, we are going to utilize Actions 2 to help us integrate user authentication as well as user login. So hopefully you'll stay tuned for that episode. Uh, if you want to download the code that you saw in today's video, make sure to head it down in the description below for the source code. That's going to be it for me today. I will see you in the next lesson. Bye, guys.